we make stretchable, wearable solar cells that can be mounted on the human body and can provide power to wearable, uh, other wearable electronics. Uh, we made them so they could be on a digital watch and an LED, but this could be for anything like a wearable biomedical sensor or other wearable devices. So the previous state-of-the-art, the material that uh, we actually compared them side by side, um, it was after five to ten cycles, the solar cell was destroyed, and uh, the ones that we created were able to sustain power conversion after over a thousand cycles. So after a thousand cycles, they were still um, they, they still retain most of their ability to, to turn sunlight into electricity. I think that the, the greatest challenge of our time is, is the way that we acquire energy, acquire, uh, the way that we acquire and distribute energy. And um, I, I honestly believe that if, if the human race doesn't get a grip on, on the way in which we do this, we're going to play the end game for all of us. And I really think it's the greatest challenge of our age because if we pass this down to the next generation, or, or the one beyond that, then time is out. You could go about tackling this problem in a number of ways. Right? Uh, silicon has been developed for 50 years and it's still not economically feasible. So what we're working on with these uh, organic solar cells or uh, plastic solar cells is making them low cost, high throughput manufacturing so that instead of making them really expensive but high efficiency, make them moderate efficiency and dirt cheap and put them everywhere, put them on everything, make them so you can print them out like newspapers on uh, roll-to-roll -roll fashion and then uh, deploy them on reels, on rolls in large solar farms, you can put them on buildings, and then now with this, wear them in clothes or on the human body. Uh, we want to use uh, inkjet printing or digital patterning in order to build something like a solar tarp, which would be a a robust electronic material that you can roll up and deploy in the field, maybe uh, for defense or disaster relief. Um, if you have uh, uh, some sort of catastrophe and it knocks out the grid, you could deploy these solar tarps and provide a canopy which would protect people from the elements at the same time, absorbing sunlight and providing power to their, uh, any of their electronic equipment below. Uh, so if we could print our solar cells from an inkjet printer using water as a solvent, uh, that would give, it would not only be a responsible way for us to acquire energy from solar energy, but also it would be a low cost and environmentally friendly way to produce them. Uh, so this is just one aspect of what we work on in the lab. Uh, it's a huge aspect of what we have worked on. Renewable energy has been uh, one of the main drives for our research. Initially, I wanted to, I set out to do all this research and, and all this to create uh, commercializable technologies. Uh, it's, it's really fantastic the things that we build in the lab, but unless we can bring them out to the world, we can't make that impact that we really hope to. Uh, so I've uh, studied physics and business uh, when I was in, an un in undergrad and went on to do my PhD so I could be on the forefront of technology. And I, I think that uh, UCSD provides many different avenues to go through to, to uh, reach those entrepreneurial goals that many of the students have through uh, E-Challenge, Von Liebig Center, and they have a number of mentors. Uh, it would be great to, uh, to work with them in, in order to commercialize this technology.